We've never, ever lived through a period like this, where trust between politics and the people, between politicians and the people, was as broken as it is now, and we intend to fix it. Nigel Farage is back on the front line of politics as he plans to shake up the EU elections with his new Brexit party. With already more than 60,000 paying supporters who have stumped up 1.5 million, the top Brexiteers' new party is steamrolling ahead to the EU elections, propelled by voters who vow to punish the Tories for the ongoing chaos around leaving the EU. But what is the Brexit party? And could it break British politics as we know it? The right-wing Brexit party was launched in January 2019 by the former city trader Catherine Blaycock and received public backing from ex-UKIP boss Nigel Farage, who led UKIP to win the last Euro polls in 2014. We want our borders back, we want our passports back, we want our country back. The former investment banker turned politician has since taken over leadership of the Brexit party after Blaycock resigned following the discovery of deleted Twitter messages on anti-Islam that she'd retweeted and some she had composed herself. The party was launched as a result of Theresa May's agreed Brexit delay, which has been extended until the 31st of October and could see the UK holding the EU elections on the 23rd of May. The Brexit party believes that this is directly going against the democratic will of the people who voted to leave the EU and instead want to ensure the delivery of Brexit by putting an end to the current two-party political structure. The two-party system isn't fit for purpose, they're serving no one but themselves, Parliament isn't even reflecting the will of the people, so we want the European elections to be the first step of a massive change. The MEP claims there isn't a lot of difference in terms of the new party and UKIP's policies, but both have a goal for a Britain that's an independent, self-governing, democratic nation. UKIP's current leader, Gerard Batten, has said, however, that his party is the true voice of Leave voters, and despite many of its members having left to join the new Brexit party, he believes it still has a future. Well, he isn't stealing my thunder. If you look at social media, we're getting tremendous support from social media, and he's not doing so well. Uh, it depends where you look, of course. But politics is a fight. It's a battle. We'll be fighting to win. Farage left UKIP in December 2018, after 25 years, claiming UKIP has descended to a lurch towards extremism and now has his sights set on a new Brexit vision to wipe out the Tories. While its policies aren't far from that of UKIP's, Farage claims its members sets the two parties apart. The Brexit party hosts a variety of candidates across the board, including the likes of free speech campaigner and left-wing activist Claire Fox, who might seem like an unlikely, somewhat controversial candidate, but nevertheless stands united with Farage to deliver Brexit. I'm from the left. If you sat Nigel and I down, I am not going to agree with them on any range of questions from immigration to workers' rights. That's true. But the historic question posed to us is whether we're going to let democracy be overturned. Also among the ranks is Tory Eurosceptic Jacob Rees-Mogg's sister, Annunciata Rees-Mogg, who ditched her previous alliance with the Conservative Party, and former Tory MP Anne Widdecombe. The nation is thoroughly fed up and wants an end. And I believe that if in the European elections we sent a yeah. real seismic shock to both major parties, right. Labour Heartlands and Tory Shires, uh, they will start to take it seriously. In total, there's an estimated 200 candidates who have put themselves forward to stand for the Brexit party in the May 2019 European Parliament elections. But will it have electoral success? A recent YouGov poll has put the party ahead of Labour and the Tories on 27%, with UKIP trailing behind at just 7%. And with the Tory party sitting in the third place, the pressure has yet again been amped up for May to resign. However, Britain's first-past-the-post system doesn't favour smaller parties and could mean that while Farage has managed to gain an influx of support, it might not be enough to have a genuine political impact. You know, I'm not going to allow, Claire Fox is not going to allow, Anne Whittacombe is not going to allow Westminster to roll over 
the greatest democratic vote in the history of our nation. We are fighting back and we believe by doing this we can change politics for good. Deputy Labour leader Tom Watson has also warned that with the rising support for the Brexit party and its potential to do well in the European elections, the only way for Labour to sway voters is to back a second referendum. If we can't get a deal, if we can't get our red lines met, then the conference policy negotiated by Keir Starmer is that we go, that we go for a people's vote. But if Farage and the Brexit party are successful in the EU elections, he hopes the same voters will carry him through to a victory closer to home. If you show people you're capable of winning in one set of elections, even though it's a different electoral system, people will start to believe that it's possible in a general election too. But it's not just the arrival of the Brexit party that's hoping to alter the landscape of British politics. Change UK are a group of pro-Remainers who want to bring about a people's vote and stay within the European Union. Like the Brexit party, it was formed after Labour and Tory MPs left their parties because they weren't happy with the way its leaders were handling Brexit. But unlike the Brexit party, they want to put the Brexit decision back to the people and support the UK remaining in the EU. When the group was approved in April, it announced 3,700 applications for the European elections, from which only 70 candidates were then picked, including Tory MP and leading Brexiteer Boris Johnson's sister, Rachel Johnson, and ex-BBC correspondent, Gavin Esler. As Brexit looms, the uncertainty surrounding our membership with the EU continues to divide a fed-up nation. And despite it all, we might still get to vote in the upcoming elections. Just which party will come out on top remains to be seen. But one thing's for certain. British politics is going through a seismic shift. Britain needs the Brexit party, and the Brexit party needs you. Thank you. Oh,